Oh, he's getting it now. Hey everyone, welcome to Metal Customs. Well, back on the 68 project, as y'all that seen the last video seen, we were getting ready to do all the uh, rear end stuff on here. Well, we got that all accomplished, everything's painted, everything's installed. I'll give you a quick look at that. And then we're going to go to the front end and get all that done up and taken care of as far as the brakes, rotors, getting it all assembled and painted on there. But let me show you where we're at on the rear end. Well, as you can see, we got them rotors painted black up there. Yeah, it turned out really nice. The Ford Red Calibers and that shock. Yeah, man. I thought the shock would be a bit much, but it does blend in pretty good. Then we have our new springs, our shocks in there, which we just left black. And then we've got the red isolators in there, which gives it a nice little splash of color. Yeah, but that turned out really good. I'm really happy with that. And there we go. Get the rotors blacked out. And that red caliber on there looks really nice. And of course that ugly green shock, we got it red and got it installed. And also our outer tire rods had a little rust on them, so we didn't clean them up, painted them red. Yeah, if it wasn't for all the dust, it would look uh, really, really nice, but... That looks good. I'm going to wait till tomorrow to put my wheel on. I'm sure this paint's not 100% cured. But I'm happy with that. I like the look. The front matches the back now. So, that's all good. Alright, got tires put back on. Got her lowered down. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm liking that look. Well, I hate that dust, but hey, it's part of it. Now, Casey and I went ahead and measured for the drive shaft, so we took the engine and transmission out of it. Nice to have that out of our way, because now, uh, Casey's working on something else. When he gets through with that, he can come back. We can bolt the hood on, shut it. I can get on top with the height going up and down. You see, it loosens and tightens the hinges from standing inside the engine bay. It just makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, it's a two-person job, but you can get really right on the money doing it that way. But until then, I think I'm going to start on the doors. You remember we had some damage from shipping. This door here, luckily, is just this right here. So I'm going to see what I can do with my body hammer and a dolly. Try to get that one worked out. And if that goes well, I'll tackle that other side. Alright, to work on the uh, doors and stuff, what I've done, I took the fenders off, I went ahead and pulled the motor and transmission out. As I th believe I said earlier, that way it's easy to get in up underneath there and get that hood adjusted. But I've got this door here worked out pretty good. I'm mean, considering as bad as it was. All of that was folded up under there. Casey. Always. But yeah, that ain't looking bad. One thin coat of filler on that and a sand, and we'd be ready to rock. Now, it was this passenger door that was beat up so bad. And guys, I've been working the crap out of it. You can see I got the line back how it's supposed to be. And that was a lot, a lot of hammering, pry bar, and wood blocks, you name it. I throwed it in there, but this is not looking bad at all. Like I say, maybe a light coat of filler. I'm going to work it a little bit more. I got this little indention here. I think I can get some of that out. But I like to work the metal as much as I can and use less filler as possible. But so far, so good. Well, I do believe that's about as good as I'm going to get that door worked out. Now, the fender's not lined up. That's why the gap's not looking good. And the door needs to be readjusted a little bit. She is sitting up a little high there. But, 
got that worked out pretty fair. I mean, it is going to take a little bit of filler to get it out there perfect, but that's no big deal. Uh, driver's door, pretty much same with it. Got it worked out there pretty good. Light coat of filler, and I should do that. So, seeing as we're not doing filler work at the moment, what I would like to do is check out this trunk. Yes, it's been over six weeks waiting on this thing. Let's unbox it and see what we got. All right, this thing came in last night on FedEx. So, you know they are, they're fast, they run up, drop it, get your vehicle and leave. They never give you a chance to inspect anything. And that's the way it was with them uh, doors as well. I don't know who glued this box, but they uh, they sure had a lot of fun doing it. It's already got staples on it. Come on. Throw my back out. This up the package. Well, that's just so ridiculous, isn't it? Come on out of the box. There we go. Get everything. That's everything. Well, we got uh, plenty of lovely bubble wrap as usual. Which is good, I'm glad to see that they did package it at least decently well. This stuff's going to get on my nerves. time I get this open, I'll be wore out and won't want to work on the car. I should be able to tear it and wrap away. End caps, I think that you literally call them. At least they weren't chintzy with the saran wrap, right? I'll set this over in the trunk. Never ordered anything from this company before, so we'll be looking at this stuff pretty closely because they have the front end that we want for this vehicle as well. I mean, it's fiberglass, we know that. There's going to be a lot of fine sanding. There's some, uh, not much gel coating on there, is there? You can see where it's chipped around the edges and stuff like that. You can see the raw fiberglass in her. Yep, good thing I use that uh, epoxy sealer primer because we wouldn't be needing it for this here. No doubt, let's see, this is, yeah, it doesn't even have holes or anything drilled in it. And the 
trunk lid itself. Well, at first glance, before I even pick it up, this thing's rough. I got a crack here I'm going to have to fix. Right there around the edges. Looks like it just didn't bond very well or something. One down here. We'll bring y'all in closer. Alright, you can see that. And then one looks like one down here the same. Yeah, I got some inclusions there. And a crack here. And I reckon that's what to be expected. I bought fiberglass stuff before. But it's been years ago, and I think uh, quality was just a lot better back then, apparently. I mean, I can take the Dremel and clean up this stuff here. That's no problem. I'm looking for any major cracks or mess-ups on it. Now, if the corners are all that's there, they won't be too bad. Let's flip it over and look at the top. Just uh, we'll set it on the vehicle, see you know just how it looks sitting there. See if it even comes anywhere close to a uh, fit. Wow. You know, I did find some little things wrong with it. For the fit, it's sitting high right there, isn't it? I'm going to have to take some of that off. The fit on the sides is fantastic. And that looks pretty good. I mean, the height of it, it sucks. As you see, it's sitting up high here. That means there's going to have to be some material taken off this thing. Underneath. Yeah, it's going to have to be a lot of work to make this thing fit right. Let's uh, try one of our side pieces and just see how close they got this. And here's the thing, guys. You buy this fiberglass stuff like this, you better be ready to work it. Because it ain't going to just bolt on there nice and pretty and all. Yeah, that comes nowhere to fitting. Yeah, I, I don't know how well y'all can see that. Okay, the trunk's sitting about where it needs to be. I mean, that's pretty much it right there. Put the side piece in here. Of course, this bevel right here goes up inside. And you can see it lacks a ton. Look at this gap down here. Y'all see that? Yes, I can put my fingers in here. Very, very crappy made. And to make it look right back here at the back, trying to get it where y'all can see good, there should be a nice gap between there, like that. But if we do that, well, we're missing most of the quarter panel. So to get it out here right with the quarter, that's the gap that we're going to have. Yeah, going to be some filler work and a lot of doing to make this stuff fit. 
Now that's a little bit uh, aggravating, or well, there's more than a little bit aggravating. The stuff is just not made well. But here's the issue that I ran into, and the reason why I ordered from this guy here. For one, this guy is an actual uh, facility that makes all this stuff. He was the only person I could find that had the trunk with the side pieces. Because if you're using the Shelby style trunk, you gotta have the Shelby style side pieces. And he was the only one that I found that has the Shelby style the GT500 front end, upper and lower. So we may have to go with him and just do the fitting repairs as they come in and as we have to deal with it. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm dealing with at the moment. We got it, but it's going to be a lot of work to make it fit and look right. All right, guys, as y'all can see, I've been sanding just a little bit on this thing. Well, if I pull the camera around there, you can see it. Yeah, I've been rounding these edges up and getting this where it fits a little bit better. And our hinges finally came in. These are the correct ones for the fastback. So what we're going to do is bolt them in, get our trunk bolted on, and that will let us get this trunk in there where it's supposed to be. Uh, pretty plain cut and simple. Engines are like yay. You got the two slots here and the two bolt holes here. So just get them into position. Now, one thing different about these, you know, the uh, original springs had the crossbar, a piece of steel in them, and that's what we use for the actual spring action. But with these, you see it has the coil spring on there, so no crossbar is required. them bolts started in and get them snug down. Uh, they're just regular American threads of 16 bolts and I do have some lock washers on there. But yeah, let's see how that's going to work for us. Two for this side, two for that side, and the trunk.
because it's going to start a little bit funky. There we go. No cross thread no my watch. can do here is get this where we pretty much want it. Pull them a little too tight. No, that should still slide. The idea is, of course, I've left everything loose. Just be able to shut it. Then we're down all the way. Yeah, this side's just not coming anywhere close to me. We don't need a finger's gap in there, that's for sure. So we've got to figure out a way for these to go. That one went back just fine. I don't know what this one's malfunction is. Huh, this one seems to be all the way back. Yeah, it's looking okay over here. Go back. This side here won't go back. None at all. Well, there you go. Pulling with these uh, fiberglass made parts. What we're going to have to probably do is slot the holes out in our hinges a lot more and make it where it will go back there. Let me uh, give me a little weighted something for this to hold this down. And then I'm going to go inside. Luckily, there's no back window, so we can go in there and reach up through there and see what we got to work with. Well, I got her all bolted on there, but I'm not 100% happy with the way it's working. I mean, I've got the trunk on correctly. She will shut and she will open. But that gap, to me, is just a little excessive. Here's what I think the issue is. Of course, this being fiberglass, this trunk is a lot thicker. Thicker than a regular, the lip of a factory trunk would be. See right there? It's barely hitting right there. And exactly the same on the other side. So, what I think I need to do, so that I can get this close, just a, I'd like to move that up a little bit and get that gap a little bit tighter. Need to take his trunk off and come in here on this edge right here and bevel this edge like at a 45. That way it shouldn't hang whenever it's picked up. So I'm going to snatch a trunk off and do me a little hand sanding. Yeah, that's all I'm going to do is hand sand on this. I don't want to gouge on her. And we'll get that done, put it back on. You see, I did take a sharpie and mark where my hinge locations were. That way I can put it right back on the exact same, except move it in just a shade. And that should do us. We'll see. Got that bevel ground down in there. Now I got a gap that I can live with. That ain't bad at all. It's exactly the same on each side. Next thing I'd attend with is this line right through here. You see, I've already taken a Sharpie. What I did, I just stuck it here and run it down where it give me a line where I need to cut off some of this excess material on this trunk so that we can match the gap that we have over here. 
And unfortunately, guys, with fiberglass, that's about the way you're going to do it because I know some people say, well, I'll just move the trunk over to the left. No, you can't. See this line right here? I don't know if the camera's picking that up good. There's a line on the roof. There's a line coming down through here and down through here. That line is on the money. So that trunk is centered from left to right. Now, we just got to take some of that off. And that should be fine. Uh, as you can see, it opens up well. And after I got that edge beveled out, yeah, that turned out really, really good for me. Well, if the camera will focus. Hello, camera. There you go. Yeah, y'all see some of that edge that I beveled down through there. But yeah, that worked out fine. Now we'll snatch the trunk off one more time and get these edges right here taken care of and then throw it back on there and see how she fits. And there we go. Now, this gap matches this gap. And how to do that? Block sander and some 80 grit and a lot of elbow grease. Yeah, man. Well, that way it stays straight because I'm using a good block. And that there looks nice. I'm happy with the gap up there. Yeah. And like I say, guys, it was very, very important for me to get this trunk just so perfect. Because once we put these side pieces on, they're going to be permanently mounted. No way to take them off. So this is a one-time shot, and it's got to be on the money. Well, cool. Now that we're happy with the fitment and everything's looking good, then we're just about ready to put the side pieces on. Uh... What I've done, I have some spacers up underneath here. And I actually put two, a bolt up in here where the trunk latch would go and put like an eyelet. And as you can see, ratchet strap. I've got this trunk pulled down with these spacers here to hold it perfect because while I'm putting the side pieces on it, I don't want it moving up and down even if I lean on it or what have you. But I like it. I like it a lot. Well, everyone, I think I'm going to call it for this video. Um, like I say, we have to put the side skirts on here, end caps, whatever you call them. And we're going to have to mold them in and make them perfect and a permanent part of the quarter in order for it to work. But what I'm waiting on, I ordered a gallon of short-haired fiberglass. That's what I like to use for this operation. And uh, ordered the rear balance ordered the GT rear balance so we'd have the cutouts for the dual exhaust. But I want that balance to come in so I can get it bolted on because as you know when these go on there and come down that's where the balance comes into. So we've got to get all that lined up as well make sure that that all fits like it's supposed to. So between waiting on that and my fiberglass we're sort of at a uh, stop point on the trunk insulation. But, at least we did make it this far, and we got all this other stuff done on the car, so progress is going very, very well. Well, everyone, I appreciate you watching. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Uh, the 68 Fastback project's coming along pretty cool. Uh, I mean, a little slow, but sometimes, you know, we're waiting on parts or this or that or something. But it is getting done, and it is turning out very well. Uh, if y'all would, please throw down some comments. Uh, if you're able, hit us up on the super thanks below. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your neighbor. Tell people that are not your friends. I don't care. Just get people hitting that subscribe button, unless you get this channel cooking along. Again, appreciate y'all watching and everything you do for the channel. Until the next one, we hope that everyone has a fantastic day.